le monde, c'est nous. Hello all and thanks for joining us this day. It's another edition of the program Views on the Continent on the Pan-African Television Africa Media. Of course, today we want to talk economy, we want to talk the continent Africa. We want to talk a continent that is richly endowed in both natural and human resources. And of course, uh, our perspective today is to see how the continent Africa can shift uh, from uh, the exporter of uh, raw materials, of course, to a producer of finished goods of value. And that is our focus this day. It is informative as well as interactive for our program. So we'll be together for one hour. And in the course of the program, we want to uh, bring forth a uh, uh, discursive uh, analysis on uh, this very important topic. What are the uh, parameters or what are the uh, necessary uh, tools to be used by stakeholders across Africa to see uh, that the continent shifts from an exporter of uh, raw materials uh, to an exporter of uh, a producer of uh, finished uh, goods of value. And that is what we are going to be analyzing with a compelling uh, a uh, panel of experts uh, joining us uh, this day. And of course, uh, with delight, I will introduce to you Mr. Elijah Enwako, who is joining from Canada in his capacity as a researcher with Leeds University on African uh, Development. And thank you so much, sir, for accepting to share your perspective on this very important aspect that has to do with the development of the continent Africa, living from uh, an exporter of uh, raw materials, of course, a producer of finished goods. It's a pleasure having you this day. On Africa Media, to share our perspective, and ideas on how to move this wonderful continent ahead. Hopefully, we're going to have a one hour of full time together. Thanks for having me. And thank you too for respecting this round of all, Mr. Elijah Inoko. Of course, it's going to be a fruitful one hour on the Pan African television. And of course, uh, with delight, I introduce to you uh, Mr. Patrick Popel, a geopolitical analyst and also expert at the Center for Geopolitical Studies in Belgrade. It's a pleasure having you this day again, sir, on the Pan African television. Thank you very much for the invitation. I'm every time very happy when I can speak in this format. And I think it's very important to inform also the people in Africa about what's happened or what can be happened in the future. Thank you so much for accepting uh, the uh, rendezvous with Afric Media today. Mr. Popel and uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just tuning in, you're most welcome to this uh, uh, very compelling TV program that uh, uh, comes to dissect uh, uh, the issues concerning the continent Africa. And of course, today our focus is on seeing how Africa can move uh, from uh, an exporter of uh, raw materials like oils, minerals, agricultural produce, and you can name the rest to uh, the a producer of finished goods that has value or have value. And of course, uh, you are most welcome. In the course of the program, you have the numbers on your screen where you can uh, participate live and share your own opinion. Remember, the goal is to see uh, that uh, there is total and practical, uh, pragmatic change across Africa in every sphere uh, with its endowment. What are the, the, the policies uh, that needs to be put in place to be able to attain this objective? Before entering uh, uh, holistically into uh, the analysis, let's listen uh, to uh, the, uh, uh, this excerpt of uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa of South Africa recently while addressing the uh, just ended Russia Africa summit. He actually reiterated and of course adding to the words of other leaders that have been critical uh, in the continent that is the president of uh, uganda yoweri Museveni, being critical about africa uh, stance towards changing the trends of course uh, living from an exporter to a producer let's listen to this excerpt and i will join you right after that be articulated by other leaders who have spoken before me, 
but more especially the very wise words of President Museveni. African countries are shaping their own destinies as nation states and as a continent. Our substantial resources must be harnessed first and foremost for Africa's benefit, to grow Africa's economies and to pursue sustainable development. And as stated by others, we no longer want to be exporting ore, soil, and dusts and rocks from the minerals of our continent, but we want to be exporting finished products that have value. There must be respect also for what we do as countries, and we must stop those countries that count their wealth and their assets in terms of the minerals that reside in the African soil, like they did in the past when they counted their wealth. They used to count their wealth in the number of slaves that they owned, that were taken from the African continent. Respect and mutual benefit should underpin what we as Africa. And that uh, was the president of South Africa, Cyril Ramaphosa, and the key word, sustainable development, growing Africa's economies, and of, of course, stopping those countries that count their wealth and assets in terms of the mineral, uh, the minerals that reside in uh, the African soil. And of course, a uh, very important uh, key uh, element, uh, key elements highlighted by uh, Cyril Ramaphosa and other uh, leaders that, that have been actually uh, intentional about seeing uh, that this uh, there is this paradigm shift uh, as far as uh, the uh, uh, continent africa is concerned in terms of raw material exportation in terms of uh, actually uh, reversing uh, the economic policies which were inherited from the time of colonialism and of course see how they can engage uh, uh, mutually with uh, uh, their uh, international partners without actually uh, uh, exporting raw materials but seeing that Africa steps up the game by producing goods of value. Thank you again if you are just joining you are most welcome and we are going straight away to kick off the analysis uh, with you Mr. Elijah in our core. Of course uh, it is about Africa's total transformation, it's about Africa's development and uh, with uh, the uh, uh, latest uh, economic report on Africa it shows that this is a critical moment for African uh, countries as uh, it presents uh, better opportunities for the continent Africa to actually harness its uh, economic trajectory and of course uh, bring about the sustainable development that leaders have been talking about all this while. So we want to get your perspective for Mr. Elijah in Raku regarding our topic for discussion this day, which uh, you can attest that is of great importance. Yeah, Clarice, I uh, appreciate that you thought about it to, for us to discuss this very, very important topic when it comes to Africa, because <clears throat> there are three cardinal pillars <clears throat> that are driving Africa behind, and this is one of them. And we'll discuss in your show here, the issue of a monetary policy for Africa. That's number one. This one now, the issue of transformation of raw products, raw materials into finished products is the third one. And the issue, you know, that one is now politics, the, you know, independent, economic independence of Africa. But let's leave the other one and talk about what we are discussing today. The transformation of raw materials from the continent of Africa. You know, I'm a man of numbers. And when I talk, it's always good that we throw up numbers that make sense so that people understand the enormity of what we're talking about. Let's take, for example, just cocoa. That is a common 
cash crop that has been produced almost all of West Africa. That's just cocoa. If you look at cocoa, how much do they sell a kilogram of cocoa in West Africa? It's between 2,500 and 3,500, somewhere around there. But how much is a kilogram of chocolate from where cocoa has been produced in the international market? It's between 35,000 to 45,000 CFP. Just think for a second. The person that produces the raw materials is being paid 2,500 francs. And the person that you know finishes it by doing what? Crushing it, adding a few minerals here and there, packaging it and sending it back to the same country, sells a kilogram of it at 40,000 francs. That's so much unfairness in this transaction in such a way that it doesn't take rocket science to see that. Africa is being killed in this area of non-transformation of raw materials. Because when we talk, sometimes it's like, sometimes people feel like it's politics or whatnot, but it's not politics. This is reality. This is something that affects people on a daily basis. Because if you look at every area of your developmental metric that we use to measure uh, development in Africa, when it comes to the raw products, transformation of raw products, it's enormous. I have just mentioned cocoa. If you go to oil and gas, you ask yourself, how many countries in Africa that produce oil and gas actually have a refinery that transforms those products into finished products? It will surprise you that Nigeria, that's an economic juggernaut in terms of production of oil and gas in Africa, <laughs> recently just had one or two refineries working with Dangote adding another one. But that's a country that's a juggernaut when it comes to production of oil and gas in Africa. Why can't we process it? If you go to rubber, you go to any other, you can name them, iron and steel, uranium, plutonium, one by one, you will see that that is where Africa has an economic disadvantage because people come, take those products on the ground, come over here, they do a little bit of transformation, send it back to the same Africa, at almost 200 to 400 to 5,000 percent, the rate at which they bought from Africa. And what that means is what? What that means is, that is loss of jobs. Because when you have transformation happening on the soil of Africa, you're going to have people are going to get jobs. It's loss of technology because there's no transfer of technology here. Because all the technology that's being used remains in the West where the transformation takes place. There's loss of transfer of skills because all the skills that are being that are needed for the transformation of those products are not being transferred to the continent of Africa. There's an economic imbalance because we find a lot of trade imbalance between African countries and the rest of the world because these guys come and export these things, process it over there, and then they send it back to us as their own product. So it adds to their GDP, GDP, but those are not their products, even though it was gotten from Africa, they're now selling it back to the world, including Africa, their own products. That skyrocket their GDP while Africa is still wallowing. So whether you talk about job creation or trade imbalance or economy or politics or whatsoever it is, as long as we still have these products being taken from the ground, stand here to the West, process here in the West and send back to us, we lose. It's a lose, lose scenario. You know, Paul Kagame made a statement recently at uh, one of those meetings, he said, Africa should come to a platform where they sign an agreement and say, no product is leaving Africa without being either finished or semi-finished. Look at it this way, ladies and gentlemen, all over the world that are listening to me. What does it take? for goodness sake, to transform or transfer or transform uh, uh, cocoa beans into chocolate. It doesn't take no much. You need to crush the cocoa beans, add a little bit of chemicals here and there, maybe a little bit whatever they do, and package it. That's what it takes. Or add milk or whatever they add to eat. We have milk in Africa. It doesn't take much to do this. It just needs the political will from our powers, our leaders that be, to put an end to this chaos. Because I call this chaos. How is it possible that you take even timber, for example, in Africa, 
villages are wallowing in poverty, wallowing in diseases and sickness. And these companies come to those environments or those uh, villages, exploit timber, carry it through dead parts. No single road is even tapped. That's what we're talking about. No single road is tapped. They transfer this timber, take it over here, transform it into paper, transform it into toilet tissue, transform it into clothing material, and then send it to back, send it back to Africa almost 3,000%. 3, this is something that shouldn't be happening. It takes just a political will. It is not because we do not have the manpower or the technological know-how. It is not because we don't have the universities and the engineers and the people to do this. It is lack of political will from the powers that be to stand up and challenge the Western powers and say, yes, we want to work with you, but you must agree to transfer the technology. You must agree to transfer the, the, the skills. You must agree for us to have a transformation here. It has been done before. It has been done before. I'll give you an example. A contemporary, a contemporary example, not in the time of Thomas Sankara, because sometimes people say, oh, that happened in the time of Thomas Sankara, that happened in recent times in Botswana. The BS, that is a company that, you know, exports gold, it transforms gold, had an agreement with the Botswana government, and they were doing crazy things over there. The current president, when he came to power, he said, guys, this has to stop. Number one, we are going to negotiate the terms of the contracts that you have with Botswana. DBS went, oh, no, 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 we're going to go into the World Trade Organization, we're going to do this. They stood their ground and say, you either agree to the terms of agreement or you don't exploit gold. Number two, they put an embargo on the trading of gold in the Western world. They said it must be listed in Botswana or, or South Africa stock exchange market for our people to bid on it and all whatnot. Not only that, they must be, I think if I remember the terms of that agreement, close to 10% transformation of that gold on the soil of Botswana before it is taken out. They made a lot of noise and all whatnot, they were going to take them into the international uh, trade traditional court and all whatnot. But at the end of the day, the president stood his ground and as we speak, the BAs had to sign into that contract. And that's what they're doing. So it is doable. It just needs the political will for the leaders in Africa to put an end to this craziness and it will be done. So there are many things we're going to be talking about. I'll give opportunity to my colleague as well. 